into this place. Welcome into this broken vessel. We desire to praise you, God. We thank you for this wonderful day. Welcome to Trinity United Methodist Church. We are the miracle on 29th Street, and we are delighted that you are here today. We thank you for all of those who are tuning in on YouTube. We welcome you today into the presence of God. Um, I would like to give a couple of announcements on we do have, coming up pretty soon on July the 14th, our uh, Where Do We Go From Here? Where we're going to be visioning where we're going to be going in the future. We know that the trend of churches nowadays is not just the pew, but for those who are also outside of the building, those who are watching on YouTube, those who turn their televisions on throughout the week and check us out. And again, our numbers are fluctuating between 20, I think we had maybe 35, 37 people watching this past week. So those are people that are part of our fellowship. We have a couple other things coming up. We have the church picnic um, in August. And uh, Mary, do you want to say anything about that? Uh, there'll be more information coming soon. More information is coming soon about the church picnic. Save the date. Save the date. It's after coming church. after church. And I thought about on that day having a, a, a hymn sing, um, having that special day for a hymn sing. But we're going to mix it up. We want to do some contemporary as well as some old school gospel songs on that day. So everybody will get a little bit of uh, satisfaction on that day. Any more announcements this morning? Anyone else? Sign up for me. Sign up, always. We always need someone to sign up to read scriptures. And if you are able, please sign up to do that. Let's all stand for our call to worship. Welcome to worship today. Thanks, we are glad to be here. Even when things get hectic, always know that you will find welcome here. We are grateful for the hospitality and friendship that are already here. So come, let us worship the God who always welcomes us. Let us open our hearts to Christ, who welcomed friend and stranger alike. Amen. We have our opening prayer. Let us pray this together. Lord, as we walk through the doors of this place of worship, we brought with us our cares and concerns, our joys and our sorrows. Touch our hearts and heal us, Lord. Make us ready to become your faithful disciples. Amen. Praise God. We are going to continue worshiping this morning. I will call upon the Lord. Number 2002, in the faith we sing, because the Lord is worthy of all of our praise. Amen.
salvation, the God of our salvation. We are going to pray our prayer of illumination together. Prepare our hearts, O oh God, to accept your word. Silence in us any voices but your own, so that we may hear your word and also do it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. And we have our scripture reading read this morning from Matthew, the 10th chapter, by Mary. Amen. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel lesson comes from Matthew, chapter 10, verses 40 through 42. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me, and anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones who is my disciple, truly, I tell you, that person will certainly not lose their reward. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Be to God. Amen. I'll be seated. Praise God. We are at that service, the time of the service. We're going to share our joys and concerns. I believe we got some microphones out there available. Or if you would like to just shout it out. Prayers. Yes, we need to continue to pray for Courtney uh, with her father passing the week before last. Um, Brenda and I were able to go to uh, the viewing of the body last Sunday. So. Yes, please remember her in your prayers. Anyone else? Joys and concerns this morning. Yes. I'd like to ask for travel safety prayers for our family. They're visiting other family in Tennessee. Okay. Amen. Anyone else? Prayers for my college friend Sylvia Witten who's been in the hospital for three weeks, but she is making progress. I forgot all the issues she's having. Our young friend, Courtney, uh, Kobe, mm -hmm. will be with us um, in August, and I think at the end of this month as well. Uh, we can rejoice with him. All of us know he's a very talented young man, and he is spending the month at Radford, for the governor's school of, for the talented or gifted. And so um, we wish him well and we want to keep him in our prayers as he's away from home and studying our special studies and traveling. And then this is a holiday weekend, so there are a lot of travelers out there. We need to keep all of them in prayer. Amen. We need to pray for Brenda, who's out not feeling well today, Brenda Baker. Joys, any joys, any blessings, any God sightings this week? Well, Keith has a birthday on the 4th. All right, birthday on the 4th. Any other birthdays this week coming up? Anyone? My mother-in-law had a birthday this week, um, and she turned 91. Amen, wow, 91. If there are no more uh, joys and concerns, we will take these concerns to the Lord in prayer. Would you please bow with me? God, we trust in your abundant mercy. So we're going to offer up, first of all, thanksgiving to you. Thank you, God, for sending people into our lives to, to show us the way. And for those who come into our lives to share that cup of cool water. When we feel too proud or too ashamed to receive it, Lord, remind us that we are your beloved, beloved children and help us to open our hearts and our hands to those who come in your name. 
even if it's in a different way than what we expected. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We're, we're sorry, God, for when we put our faith and our trust in humans and human plans and agendas, we've walked away from your plan. When we take that path away from you, bring people in our lives to lead us back to that right place with you and your never-ending love. God, we pray for people all around the world that are suffering. We pray for the people in Haiti. We pray for those that are in Ukraine. We pray for the, all of the trouble that's going on in Russia and the, the, just the, the turmoil. We pray for war-torn countries and neighborhoods throughout the world, throughout our cities, those who are victims of gun violence this week in other countries as well as in our country. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that you would send your Holy Spirit to enlighten people in our community, that you would bring renewed healing and hope, and that you would deal with those of us that are struggling to live day by day. We pray for your healing hand upon those that are suffering. We lift up Sylvia, who is in the hospital, and we pray that you would continue to recover, God. We thank you, Lord, for Kobe and his giftedness, and that you are blessing him with instructors and teachers that will help to perfect that which you've already given him. God, we lift up Pat and his family and traveling mercies as they travel on the road to Tennessee. We thank you for Brenda, and we ask that as she is at home, that you are covering her with your graces and your mercies that are new every day. God, we thank you for the birthdays that are being celebrated this week. We thank you for Beverly and her family, that she would be with them, God. Be with all of our families. We all have situations and different things going on, God, that sometimes we don't like to share it, but you know what they are. So we ask that you would intervene in those places that we can't be in right now, that you would send your Holy Spirit and your power and might to bring deliverance and healing. We give you all the glory for being such a wonderful God, for being such a great father. Father, you know, there's some of us who had fathers that were absent, that weren't present, but we know that you are a very present help in the time of need. So we thank you for that, that you will never ever leave us, that you're always available to your children. Praise you, praise you, Lord. Oh God, we just thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, God. Praise you this morning. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together in unison. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, oh, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. You know, God is so good. We, we, I mean, one day we're going to have just a testimony time. It would be so good to just hear what God is doing in the lives of each and every one of us in this congregation. Sometimes we miss out on what God is doing in our lives. So we're going to one day when we get a little bit further on, dedicate a day just for what God has done and what God is doing. Because what it does, it elevates our faith and it builds us up in our most holy faith. Amen? Praise the Lord. The Apostles' Creed. Let's recite this together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God. 
From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, and the life, resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let's continue to worship with a, an old song that I remember growing up. Lead me and guide me. Two, two, one, four, in the faith we sing.
little fun today and um, share some facts about soft drinks. <laughs> the title of the sermon is Thirst Crusher. And I don't know if you remember that there was a drink that actually had that name. Today we're going to talk about discipleship and we're also going to talk about quenching a thirst. You know, Jesus sees discipleship as, or, or hospitality, as central to discipleship. And here we consider how we receive hospitality and how we offer it. We are called to pay attention to how we welcome folks, how we include folks, how he, we help people to feel a part of what we do and what we are. And one of the assumptions that we must always remember is that everybody is thirsty. I don't care who they are, but everybody is thirsty for what we have in one way or another. We are in the thirst-quenching thirst business, amen? And the world is indeed our parish, but the world begins here in the sanctuary, in the fellowship hall, and then as we go out the door. So, Rondo was a citrus-flavored soft drink available in the United States in the late 70s and 80s. I don't know if anybody remembers Rondo. It was a blending of fine essences and lightly carbonated and famously known for its slogan, Rondo the Thirst Crusher. Its commercials featured people drinking and then they would take the can and they would crush it in different ways. Rondo was not the first because in the early days of soda, you could only get it from the pharmacist. Did you all know that? You could only get soda from the pharmacist. Uh, the drinks, um, they were actually, actually goes all the way back to the Victorian era, but early sodas were technically carbonated medicinal tonics. And the ingredients were anything from tobacco to caffeine to cocaine. Now, the drinks were marketed as the miracle cures that could transform a person's well-being. The 19th century pharmacist started adding flavors and to the fizziness of the drinks to mask the unpleasant taste of the medicinal ingredients. And as a result, uh, the earliest versions of soda, they often contain like ginger and sarsaparilla and birch bark. And those were, con they were health healthy things, you know, healthy benefits. So as the popularity of the patent and medicines grew, Many of the ingredients used in them were adapted to create the soda flavors. Now, we all know about 7-Up. 7-Up, do you know what it was designed for? 7-Up was designed to lift spirits and to cure hangovers. <laughs> so there are a lot of theories about what the ingredients of 7-Up were, and the most logical one is that it had seven ingredients. Carbonated water, sugar, citric acid, citric oils, sodium citrate, and lithium citrate. Now, we know what lithium is, and lithium is what gives the lift. It's also the drug that's used for, for people who have bipolar disorder. It helps with the manic phase. In 1885, the old list of major soft drink in America, Dr. Pepper, was created by a pharmacist named Charles Alderton, and he marketed it as an energy drink and a brain tonic with a unique taste. And it definitely is a brain tonic. I know when I'm on a road trip, I don't drink soda. But if I get tired, I always get a Dr. Pepper. That Dr. Pepper will take me for several hundred miles. The following year, another pharmacist, John Pemberton, invented Coca-Cola. The largest soft drink brand still around today and for the first 17 years, it contained a significant dose of cocaine, and it was marketed as a medicine to help get a fatigue and headaches. So during the Great Depression, when a lot of these tonics were created, the Americans were concerned about food. Food, there were shortages in food, and so these, these carbonated medicinal drinks 
helped to take people's minds off of the circumstances and things that they were going through. You know, our scripture today is, is kind of effervescent, if you think about it. It's short and it's sweet, Mary. <laughs> it's taken from Matthew, the 10th chapter, as a part of the teachings of Jesus from the Sermon of the Mount. But before we talk about that chapter 10, I always like to go back and uncover what happened in the previous chapter before all this activity. In the ninth chapter, Jesus is on this amazing missionary journey to show his disciples what ministry is all about. And I'm gonna read this. The first thing that happened is he encountered a paralyzed man lying on a bed. His friends had, took him to Jesus and Jesus told the man, stand up and walk, and he did. And during his healing the sick, he did some evangelistic work and he ran into Matthew, the tax collector, and said, dude, follow me. Matthew said, no problem. He followed Jesus. A leader of the synagogue came to Jesus in distress. His daughter was dead. On the way to the man's house, Jesus slipped through the crowd and he encountered a woman with the issue of blood. She had been hemorrhaging for 12 years. She touched the hem of his tunic and was made whole. But then up on the arrival uh, to the house of the leader of the synagogue, there was this big commotion going on. And what did he do? He put everybody out of the house and he healed the little girl. Two blind men followed him and they were healed. I call that a double healing. A man possessed with a demon or demons approached Jesus and what did he do? He cast out the demons, of course. The crowds were amazed because no one had ever seen anything like this before, that he had compassion on people. Jesus knew their social situation. He knew that people were harassed and helpless. Hallelujah, what a savior that he knows my name. He knows your name, pastor. He knows your name. He knows our names. He knows our weaknesses and our infirmities. After the disciples witnessed Jesus doing the work of the ministry, he then commissioned them. Y'all gonna do the same thing that you just saw me do. So the disciples were given authority to be envoys or ambassadors to Jesus, extending his ministry, proclaiming the good news, and performing the same works of healing and deliverance. Praise the Lord. Jesus' further instructions make it clear that disciples, if you're going to follow me, you're going to share in the same poverty, the same homelessness, and I don't want you to take with you nothing. Don't take a tunic. Don't take no extra clothing, no money. I want you to, de to depend solely on the hospitality of others that you come into contact with. Wow. Could we do that today? Are we living like that today? Uh, okay. He lets them know that they will not be welcomed everywhere they go. Just get ready for that. And that they can expect to experience the same hostil hostility, I'm supposed to say hospitality, the same hostility that Jesus experienced. He's sending them out like a sheep in the midst of wolves. He said, you can expect to encounter persecutions and trials for a disciple is not above the teacher, nor is the slave above the master. They need also to be prepared for painful divisions in the family, and we talked about that last week. Sometimes when you come to Christ, Aunt Josie gets mad because she liked you the way you were when you were a sinner, when you was drinking in the corner, okay? People get angry and they get upset. He said, get ready for that. They need to be prepared for this mission uh, 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 and breaking loyalties and ties with land and family and risk all and suffered for Jesus Christ. Jesus said, those who love their life for my sake will find it. In Isaiah 55, 1, it says, come, oh, you who are thirsty, come to the water and you without money, come, come on, buy and eat, come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. So Isaiah even recognized in his day that there were thirsty people all around him. 
It was a time of national decline and decay, and Isaiah saw four kings upon the throne of Judah. There was war, there was wickedness, there was apostasy, people were scattered. The captivity of Israel, taxes were increased, there were social inequities, like today, idolatry and wickedness permeated all levels of society. Social injustices, immorality, growing pagan worship, the land was filled with evil and with a whole lot of thirsty people. The prophet spoke of the coming of a savior when he spoke these words, surely, he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. We yet esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. He was talking about Jesus, the one who quenches and crushes all of our thirsts. You know, last week we talked about the, the first century disciples and we, we are commissioned to, just like they are, to go into all the world. Jesus told his disciple then that there was going to be a big harvest, that there are going to be a lot of people that are thirsty, but he also told them this. The bad side is that they ain't enough, there are not enough people to go and do the work. The laborers are few. Can we say that's true today? It is true. There's this big harvest of folk out there, thirsty folks, waiting for us to show up in their lives. And since the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit has been given these divine appointments. Divine appointments to followers of Christ. And we all know what they are because we've all had them at one point or another in our lives. These are encounters where we are sent into places to minister to people who are thirsty. So what does that mean? It means that we too are thirst crushers. Amen? Amen. The Holy Spirit introduces us to several different types of people. And all are thirsting for something in their lives. There are those who hear the gospel. And they are open. They are transparent about their lives. And they want to do the right thing. And they're ready to have their thirst quenched. And then there are the rebellious folks. They have been making the same mistakes over and over. We all know them. Going around that mountain over and over again. The lives are a mess and their houses are on fire. They're tired of losing and they're looking for answers. Amen? Then there are people who are going to automatically shut the door on you conversationally. They have nothing to do with religion or they've fallen away from their faith tradition. And they even question whether there is a God or not. And then there are those who know what they need to do. They know all the answers. They've read the Bible. They've been to every revival. But they're just not ready to commit. We all know folks like that, don't we? I was like that, too. In each situation, as disciples, we are to show hospitality. But we're not to be alarmed when people shut the door on the conversation. And it happens. Jesus told his disciples, when people don't show hospitality to you, they're not rejecting you, they're rejecting me. So don't take it personally. Hospitality means leaving the light on conversationally. Leave the light on. What hotel was that? Motel 6? Leave the light on. <laughs> you never know when they're going to come back. He said... He said, shake the dust off your feet when you leave that town, okay? But I don't think he means you shake the dust off your feet and you're mad at the folks. Because you might have to go back and talk to them. Talk about Jonah, right? Amen. Amen. Okay. You know, it, it, it's amazing how when you plant those seeds, as you go from place to place, there are going to be people who are not going to be ready for what you have to say. But often they'll call you back. And they'll say, let's talk a little bit about what you brought. Now, one of the phenomenons that I've noticed is about my life is this. Every now and then, I get invited to attend an event and a gathering of people. And, you know, everybody's talking and chatting and everybody's engaging in conversations. And there's good energy in the room. 
and inevitably somebody will always ask me those ubiquitous questions which are where are you from what's that other one and what do you do for a living lord have mercy so all eyes look toward me right <laughs> so when i say that i'm a pastor it gets real quiet in the room and then somebody asks the third question well are you the associate pastor and i says no i am the senior pastor there's only one pastor in this church and then they get real quiet and then all the people that was cussing <laughs> And using profanity, they start apologizing all of a sudden because they think, oh my God, I need to straighten this thing up. People start pulling the collars together. Ladies start closing up the cleavage and everything because they know the <laughs> same thing. This is what I need to do because I'm in the presence of clergy. But, 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 but the point I'm making is that when I was in that place, when people get uncomfortable like that because they say, oh, there's a clergy folk here, and it's like Jesus walked into the room, right? I think to myself, what would Jesus do in this moment? Now, it's a, it's a prime moment because I bet he would have preached. <laughs> he would have pulled out. He started preaching in that moment because he had a captive audience. Yeah. But, but then I, I didn't do that. I did what Jesus did. I stayed in the room. I stayed in the room. And it's, it's, it's often comfortable, uncomfortable in the room. But Christ stayed in the room. He's my example. He hung out with publicans. He hung out with sinners in all manner of thirsty people. It was his way of, to me, I think, showing hospitality. Because if he got offended after everything that somebody said, he wouldn't go nowhere. So what he did was he stayed amongst the people. He stayed amongst the people as a witness. His public hospitality meant so much that it sold a seed in Nicodemus' heart. We know about Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a thirsty man. And one night, he started looking for Jesus undercover. He'd heard about him, but he couldn't go in public. He, he didn't want to do that. It might mess up his game. So he went at night. He wanted to know about this born again experience. Jesus if he had not shown hospitality or made folk feel comfortable around him, I don't think we'd have ever known the story of Nicodemus, that he would actually go back to find him. Seven Up is designed to do what? To lift spirits and cure hangovers. But I want to tell y'all, I know a man who can lift up spirits and cure hangovers without any adverse side effects and his name is Jesus hallelujah so we are disciples we are learners we lift spirits we are students we are hospitable we are loving listeners we are leading others to the living water we are compassionate thirst crushers in the name of Jesus Christ, the living Lord. Amen. 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 It is a great and holy thing to be invited to the feast at the Lord's table. We will, we will, uh, we'll be getting ready to serve the Lord's Supper. Me, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah, Jesus lifted me. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God. Creator of heaven and earth, you formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets who looked for that day when justice would roll down like waters and righteousness, an ever-flowing stream. 
When nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war no more. And so, with your people on earth and all of the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And holy in the highest. Yes, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you. And blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captive, and to recover sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time has come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, he fed the hungry, ate with sinners, but the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made us a new covenant of water and the spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. The night in which he gave himself for us, he took the bread, he gave thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body, take and eat. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts, as is Jesus Christ, we offered ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your spirit on us. Gather here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them to be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be to the world the body of Christ, redeemed by your blood. By your spirit, make us one in Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast with the heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God. Amen. I'm getting better. I'm sorry. I have such Baptist tendencies in me, it's so hard to do some things. I am becoming Methodist. Anyway, praise the Lord. It's so good to have you all here. It's so good to see your faces. It's so good to fellowship with you. I pray that you would have an excellent week the presence of God is with you, that you would just be on fire when you leave this place today. Let's all stand. Oh, we got a song, don't we? I got peace like a river. Come on, let's stand up and sing it together, and we will just be dismissed. Hallelujah.
Let us all bow our heads for the dismissal and blessing. Lord, thank you for this day. Y'all go in peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen and amen. Be blessed. Amen.